Hi, welcome to Dive Deep. I'm Shelby Cornett. I'm the ministry assistant at Cambridge City Christian Church, and this is Danny. Hey, Shelby. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got a little cold. You can probably hear it in my voice, but we'll just make it through. Yeah. Yeah. I probably won't be as energetic and as fun loving as I usually Uh, am during your podcast today. I apologize in advance for that. I got to be the life of the party. Yeah. You got to pick it up. Yeah. You got to pick up the slack. I'll do what I can. All right. Okay. But it kind of makes sense though, because this week was be still. Be still. Yeah. So just. Yeah. What was your thoughts initially on it? I mean, it came from Mark chapter four. Yeah. I like this. I don't I don't know if I say story. Mm. I like this. Yeah. The instance, the, the circumstance, yeah, the, yeah, story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like, I like this one yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, what's your favorite and part about the story? I like that the people were freaking out, mm-hmm. and Jesus was just like, "Yeah, okay, really." So, would you have been freaking out? Probably. You ever been on a boat? Yes. Ever been on a boat in a storm? Been I've on been on a boat when the, when the twice. Waves are coming over the sides. No. Okay. I was on a boat when it broke down once. Okay. Like a speedboat. Oh, okay. And that kind of scared me, but it was fine. Right. Like you didn't like the idea of being stranded. But, right. But you didn't feel unsafe. And I've been on a cruise ship. Well, yeah. And like there was like twice where I was like, ooh, it moved. Ah, uh-huh, you could feel it a little <laughs> yeah. bit. Yeah. 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 It's like a city on water. Right. Right. So. Yeah. It wasn't like a, what was that movie, a Poseidon? Oh see yeah, that movie where the no. the rogue wave comes and knocks the ship over its side. No, and, yeah, it wasn't. It was like no that. Titanic it moment. Wasn't that right kind of a ride? No, no, yeah. No, although it, I'm scared of water. Yeah. So what? So do you I swim won't or? kayak. Oh, you don't kayak? That's not your thing. No. No. Well, I've been in a canoe, but I could. The water went up to like maybe my hip. So. Okay, so you didn't feel unsafe because it wasn't very deep. Right. Yeah. So you've never really boated, I guess, much, no. really. Okay. Huh. No. So you probably would not have been in the boat with the disciples in the first place. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. Unless I had to. Yeah. You'd have maybe just walked all the way around the Sea of Galilee <laughs> yeah. rather than taking the yeah. boat across. I'll yeah. see you in a few days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get it. I, I'm not a big... Uh, I'm not a big boat person either. I mean, I, I'm scared I, I'm of being not... trapped, like underwater. Yeah, yeah. The whole drowning thing—that's usually something yes. we're afraid of, right? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I mean, I don't know how to swim, so, so that I could probably swim to like save my life for a minute. Yeah, but... I might be able to do that too, but I, I don't know. I've just—it doesn't scare me to be on boats, but I'm definitely more aware of my surrounding mm-hmm. like I'll make sure that I'm wearing a life vest and things like right. that you know um so yeah I I can get but it but if Jesus was on the boat yeah then you should be able to just so if you got in a kayak let's say you got in a two-person kayak mm-hmm. I'd kayak with Jesus okay you sure yeah he's Jesus okay, okay well but I the disciples in the story I trust him but the disciples in the story had Jesus. Well, in the boat. yeah. When you look at the story, what do they do? You just we just said they freaked, they freaked out. out, right? Yeah. So why do you think they know. freaked out even though Jesus was in the boat? Instinct. Hmm. So it's if I was, of, it's I our guess, default to be afraid. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why do you think I that know. is? Why do you think? Why do you think being afraid is our default? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's. I think it's a, It's an important question to consider. Mm-hmm. I mean, actually, in the story, Jesus asked them kind of that same question at the very end. Um, I'm trying to remember. It was in verse, uh, yeah, I've got it circled here. It was in verse uh, 39 and 40. He asked them two questions. First, he asked them, why are you afraid? And then he asked them, do you still have no faith? So if you think about it, when he said, why are you afraid? That's what I'm asking you. Why do we get afraid? Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's our default. Right. It's our sinful nature. It's um, the feeling that we have to take care of things for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah. And so when we can't take care of it, when we can't do it ourselves, what do we do? We become afraid. Because mm-hmm. um, we like to have control. Yeah. So you bring that into our circumstances. Anything we can't control, 
mm-hmm. is kind of like the waves crashing over the side of the boat in this story. Um, so this story connects to pretty much any kind of problem mm-hmm. or issue that we have in our lives. Yeah. Um, that's why I think this story, I mean, it was one of the earliest stories I can remember learning when I was a kid in children's church was, you know, Jesus calming the, the, the yeah. sea. Um, and, um, and that's because it just relates to so many things. It's not mm-hmm. just about being on a boat. It's about life. Yeah. And who 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 are we going to trust in the boat when the when the waves mm-hmm. are rocking and you know, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, it's like Jesus is like, "Don't you know I got this?" Yeah. Like Yeah. We need to think that mm-hmm. in like day-to-day life when we're worried about things. Yeah. And, well, it's something that, that really is interesting. So you think of these disciples that were in these boats, because there were more than one boat. We, mm-hmm. we know from the story that it sounds like there was multiple boats, although obviously Jesus was only in one. Um, the, these guys were seasoned fishermen. I mean, mm-hmm. they'd been out on this lake thousands of mm-hmm. times. I have no doubt they were out on that lake when storms came along. Mm-hmm. Um Although I will say I didn't get into this Sunday, but the storms on the Sea of Galilee are quite interesting. Um, I've read in several sources about how they can become very severe very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times they didn't see them coming. And and part of the reason is because of the topography. I think we've talked about this before when I did another sermon some time back. But around the Sea of Galilee, if you, if you think of the Sea of Galilee, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a bowl. Mm-hmm. Like if you think of a bowl... Um, you know, you have water that sits in the bottom of a bowl, but then you have the, the rim at the top mm-hmm. of it. Well, the Sea of Galilee has mountains that surround it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of in the bottom of this bowl. And uh, and so what happens is that air comes down over the edges. What does it do? It falls down those hills mm-hmm. and comes across that wide open lake, and it could create very violent storms <laughs> uh, very quickly. Yeah, and so they they would have known what storms were. They've been in storms, but this storm seemingly was way different. Mm-hmm. So that gives us the idea that this was something that was not just natural. There was some kind of a supernatural um, piece to this, mm-hmm. and um, and so that's why Jesus, when he stands up in the boat, he says, "Peace be still." And what's really funny is if you look at the language. I did talk about this Sunday. It's he's almost like speaking to a toddler. Um, yeah, he's he's saying sit down, you know, like you would to your, yeah. to your child, you know, that's what Jesus says to the storm. Mm-hmm. Um, and we do the same thing with our problems. Mm-hmm. We need Jesus to come and say, just calm down, sit down. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of an inter- it's a very interesting story. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like this one yeah. a lot. Yeah, that was like the only note I took this week uh-huh. was under the. From Mark 4, 39 and 40, mm-hmm. I said, where it said, a storm's power is only as much as we allow it. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Is that true? Or is that just it's, some nice thought? I, mean, I think it's true, mm-hmm. but it's also really hard yeah. Yeah. to practice that. Yeah. So so let's... <coughs> it's let's, easy to tell somebody else. Yeah. So let's, let's take Jesus out of the equation, though. Mm-hmm. Is that true if Jesus isn't a part of the equation? No. Okay, why not? I don't think so. Because mm-hmm. if you don't have Jesus, it's just chaos. Yeah. Like, there's no... There's no one that has the ability to take control Yeah, there's of it. no control yeah. at all. Yeah. So that's why you have to have someone who has the ability to take mm-hmm. that control, which is Jesus. He's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. I have no control over anything. Right, right. Well, we like to think well, we do. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we know. I the, want to. We know the truth. Sometimes. But we know the we we know the truth, but we still try to live in our own reality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I well, want to control my house and my kids. And right, but not everything goes the w- exactly the way you want it to. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. See, the the point that we talked about this week was accepting His presence over your circumstance, mm-hmm. and that that kind of gets to what you're saying here is. Um, if we are truly going to be able to overcome life storms, it has mm-hmm. to be a focus. We have to focus more on him being with us in the storm and the process of him going through the storm with us right. than just trying to get get through the circumstance. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm trying to think. We we often have a saying, um, uh, and I and I say this too sometimes, and it isn't and it isn't exactly right, but you got to push through it. That's it. Yeah. You got to push through it. And and while I, I I think it's not totally wrong, the fact is, is that when we're in a circumstance, we need to also recognize the presence of Jesus in it and enjoy that even in the middle of that trying circumstance. Mm-hmm. That Jesus is right there with us in the boat. I mean, obviously, it was hard for the disciples to enjoy that moment with Jesus. But I can guarantee you that when they recollected this circumstance mm-hmm. to other people years down the road, they probably looked back on it with a little bit of fondness. Yeah. You know, because not because the storm was great to go through, but because who was there. Mm-hmm. And um, and so I think the faster we realize that, understand that fondness up front the more we can enjoy the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, uh, yeah. yeah. It made me think of, like, when we're trying to do things on our own, it's like we're just, like, treading water. Like, we're not not getting anywhere. Yeah. But he has the ability to just pull us out or make it stop. Yeah, yeah. Here in a few chapters, we're going to talk about him walking on water. And that was something Mm -hmm. I referred to Sunday because – uh, we know Jesus' character. Jesus obviously would have never left the disciples, mm-hmm. but he had the physical ability to do so. Yeah. Like, he could have walked on water and walked out of the situation. He's mm-hmm. like, forget you guys. I'm heading for the shore. Yeah. Um, but he didn't, and, and that tells us something about who Jesus is mm-hmm. as well. So, yeah. Um, there was something else, too, that I pulled into the passage uh, that I thought was essential. You know, when we look at Jesus, we wonder who Jesus is. Like, who mm-hmm. is Jesus? And and I went to Isaiah 9, 6, which is one of the more uh, famous like prophecies about Christmas. Yeah. It, that's also used uh, in the, uh, in the uh, birth account of Jesus, his arrival in, into this world. And, and it's uh, Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And, <coughs> and when we look at this story, I think that what is said there in Isaiah fits very well. Mm-hmm. With what, what with what we're looking at uh, here in Mark uh, five four, um, he's a wonderful counselor. You know, he's he was there with him. He was present. He was mm-hmm. willing to listen. Uh, he was mighty. Obviously, he stopped the storm. He's everlasting. He was there before the storm. He'll be there after the storm, mm-hmm. and that he's the Prince of Peace, which is what he brought over the sea that day. I mean, that's who he is. That's his, the very epitome of who Jesus is. Mm-hmm. Is, is it. so I think that this prophecy that we see. Speaking of the coming Messiah, fits perfectly and beautifully well in this passage yeah. as we see the nature and the character of Jesus. So I don't know. I just thought that that was that was quite um, you know interesting that it mm-hmm. that the, that it could connect. You know, a, a quote unquote Christmas text, mm-hmm. you know, could connect with this story. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And you talked about him being here before the storm and after yeah. our storms. Yeah. It's like our storms in our lifetime are like minuscule nothing yeah. to him yeah it doesn't feel That's like it to us but it, but they are yeah know? yeah not nothing to him is like it it matters right it matters but it's him. so small in yes. the grand scheme yeah yeah it is and and that's one of the disadvantages we have being so wrapped up in temporal time like we have it god isn't mm-hmm. bound by that so we tend to focus a lot on storms because we do think of a big time yeah. you know it, it takes time and it does but it's but in the grand scheme of it all in the scheme of eternity it's very very tiny minuscule yeah 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 um and then uh one of the one of the challenges was you know what is it that we are giving headspace to instead of jesus like what storms in our lives and i you know, I think all of us watching today and listening on Sunday, mm-hmm. I think we all can think of some things that we have dwelled on a lot. Right. Maybe it's a hurt. Um, maybe it's something somebody said to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's a past broken relationship. Maybe it's even a current relationship. Where even things that don't even affect us directly. I think. Yeah, yeah. We we tend to give it a lot of headspace in it, and in the process, we don't give Jesus the space that he mm-hmm. deserves and that he should have, and. Um, so that's it. I thought that was you know important for us to consider. Um, but anyway, it was it was an interesting one this week. I yeah. really enjoyed it. So yeah, uh, always love this story. One yeah, of my me favorites. too. So, yeah. 
Yeah. What's next week? So yeah, next, next week, week we're talking about caring mm-hmm. uh, for other people. Uh, we'll be in Mark chapter 5. We're going to go through the whole chapter. There's actually three instances in Mark chapter 5 uh, that we're going to look at. One is when Jesus uh, actually goes to a cemetery and meets a demon-possessed man. Uh, another is situation that happens right after that is when a woman touches Jesus and is healed. And mm-hmm. then there's a, there's a religious leader, a leader in the synagogue, whose child, daughter, Da, is dead and mm-hmm. comes to Jesus, and Jesus revives her. And, and what we're going to see through these three stories, these three instances, is a challenge for us this Christmas. Now, you might think, okay, wait a minute, how do those three stories connect with Christmas? Believe me, they do, because this season can very easily become about us. Mm-hmm. It can be very easily become, a, or even become easily a, about caring for those that are easy to care for. Right. And that's kind of what I'm going to talk more about on Sunday is we, we it's easy to care for your family or mm-hmm. your kids or um, friends that you're close to, but what are you going to do to care for people who who you don't agree with yeah. or who have a disease that you're uncomfortable being around? or live in a part of town where you're not very safe and feeling. T- I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. really going to be a challenge for us to consider what caring looks like because I'm not sure that caring is really caring. I mean, it is, but but it's not caring in the Jesus way. If it comes easy to If it you. comes easy, exactly. And so that's that's what we're going to take a look at next week. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Is that it? I think so. I think so. it was, <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was a good week. Cool. With Pat, this whole series, we say this every time, but I mean, I've really enjoyed going through the book of Mark, though. It's, mm-hmm. it's been nice going through it verse by verse. Um, Is this the first time that we've done this? Uh, I mean, I've done other sermon series. I've gone through the book of okay. Revelation and other ones verse by verse. But mm-hmm. uh, the first one we've this done This might be a my first years. one. Might be. It's been a couple years since we've done a verse by verse. We've done books of the Bible before. Oh, we did Nehemiah, didn't we? Yeah, we've done books of the Bible, many, you know, several of them, but... It wasn't like verse by verse, right? Um, so, you know, because if you do a verse by verse of every book, I mean, you know, even a story like Nehemiah is going to take you months and months and months. Mm-hmm. So, that, so we generally try to condense it, but this time we're not. We're going through the whole book, and yeah, it's going to take us what nine months to get through it. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's yeah. it's been really good. I really yeah, enjoy it's cool. it, enjoying it. So yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you next week and we'll talk about, I forgot already. Caring. (laughs) Caring. (laughs) That's important.